<laughs> Are you hiding? <laughs> From the bird, yeah. Just like dive bombed me, flew so close to me, and then shit on my shirt. <laughs> it's like dropped it right out of the air at me. <laughs> Video, I'm gonna go over common filming fails that I see time and time again from people who are new to video and how to fix them in the editing room. So let's hop into Premiere Pro and get at it. So I'm in Premiere Pro and the first tell that someone's new to video is this. Do you see it? The crooked horizon line? When you're filming and you're trying to capture something, it's really easy to overlook making sure your horizon line is level. So if you film something that's obviously crooked when you get into the editing room, here's how to fix it to make your footage look better. And one thing I like to do before I adjust my horizon line is turn on my safe margins on my program window. If you don't see this icon, you can go over to the right of your program window here, click on the button editor, it's this plus symbol, find the safe margins icon, drag it onto the program window like so. I'm gonna click on it to activate it. It's in blue, that's how you can tell it's activated. And there we go. Now we have our safe margins up that we can use as a reference. Next, I'm gonna go up to the effect controls window and scale this footage up just a little bit to 110. I'm gonna go to the rotate option and move it to the left just a little bit. And as I'm rotating this clip, I'm lining up the bridge line so that it's parallel to the safe margins straight line. Okay, minus five looks nice and straight. Now I'm gonna adjust the position to bring this clip lower just a little bit. And there we go. By zooming into your footage just a little bit so you aren't seeing quality loss and by rotating our image, we can quickly fix the crooked horizon line. Okay, so let's say maybe you were filming indoors with tungsten light and you set your white balance to an indoor lighting setting, then you went outside and you forgot to change your white balance to daylight or 5600 Kelvin. So you have this shot, you really like it, but it looks super blue because you shot it in the wrong color temperature. Well, to fix this, we need to use Lumetri color correction. Let's go up to window and click on Lumetri color and there we go. There is our Lumetri color window. So let's go to our temperature slider and drag it all the way to the right to add orange into our footage. Awesome, there you go. Correcting your color temperature is that simple. Okay, so this next filming fix I'm gonna show you is something that you may already know about. I see people use this effect on shaky footage, but they don't use the effect correctly or they use it when they really shouldn't. If your footage is really shaky and you just throw warp stabilizer on it, it might make your footage worse. So first I'm gonna show you a clip that's just too far gone. Warp stabilizer is not gonna save it, it's just gonna make it worse off. And then I'm gonna show you another clip that's handheld, a little shaky, but can be smoothed out really nicely with warp stabilizer used correctly. Okay, so first I wanna show you a clip that's too shaky for the warp stabilizer effect. It was shot handheld, it's bouncy, it's just not good. Let's add warp stabilizer onto it. And as you can see, warp stabilizer just made this clip look even worse. Let's look at another clip that was shot handheld. It's just a little bit shaky. By adding the warp stabilizer effect on this particular clip, likely we're gonna be able to make this clip look better and less shaky. I'll put warp stabilizer on this clip. In most cases, when you use warp stabilizer, you'll have to adjust the setting slightly. Usually I'll bring the smoothness down to around 30 or so. With this particular clip, I'm gonna change the result tab to no motion, and I'm gonna change method to perspective, and there we go. The shot now looks very stable. Whenever you have shaky footage that you want to make less shaky, in some cases, the clip will honestly just be better off without warp stabilizer on it, looking shaky 
the way it was shot. It's better to have shaky footage than super warped weird footage. Okay, next we got to talk about something that it's even hard to spot in the moment when you're a pro filmmaker, especially if you're on the go and you're filming, you're outdoors and you're changing lenses quickly so you can get that perfect shot. And that is a dirty sensor or dirty lens. And when you're filming and you're just looking at the little camera screen, you're probably not gonna see that footage. When you get back to the editing room, however, and you're checking out what you shot on a bigger monitor, ugh, that's when you see it. And it's so frustrating, it really is. But if that happens, there is a way to remove that speck of dust or whatever's on your lens or sensor in the editing room. So let's hop into it and I'll show you how. Do you see it? I'm gonna change the view of this clip from bit to 200% so we're nice and zoomed in. Just scroll over and up on our program window and there's that dust spot, do you see it? It just sits in the exact same part of the frame and it's a little bit darker than the rest of the sky. We'll go back to fit so we can see the entire frame. I'm gonna head down to my timeline and click on this clip, hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard and drag it up so I can create a duplicate layer on the V2 track. Next, I'm gonna go up to the effects window and type in dust and there we go under noise and grain we have the dust and scratches effect. We'll drag that on to my duplicate clip. And the reason I made a duplicate is because I wanna show you the before and after. All right, now in the program window, I'm gonna zoom into 200% again, so I can get a really good look at this dust spot. And now what I'm gonna do is under effects control and the dust and scratches effect, click on the pen tool. And I'm gonna use the pen tool to draw around this dust spot, like so. And I'll make sure that the shape that I'm creating around this dust spot is connected by clicking around. And lastly, on the first point I made, cool. Okay, back under the dust and scratches drop down menu where it says mask feather. We'll highlight that and change the mask feather to 35. Next, we'll change radius to 50. And because this is a heavier effect, it's still gonna take a few seconds for the effect to actually take effect. Cool, okay, look, that dust spot is gone. The dust and scratches effect has done an awesome job. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about composition, and that's a whole can of worms all on its own. When you're starting off as a filmmaker or a video person, Generally, you want to use the rule of thirds to compose your footage. The rule of thirds looks like an X's nose grid. And basically what you want to do is have your subject or your focal point in your image fall on one of the four quadrants or on one of the lines of the rule of thirds grid. The first thing that we're gonna do is import a 1920 by 1080 rule of thirds PNG file that we're gonna put over this footage as a reference. Check out the link below. You can download it for free, use it for whatever you want. It's a really helpful tool for making sure that your composition's looking good. Okay, so I've imported that and I'm gonna put it on the V2 track on my timeline. There we go. And I want Will's eyeball to sit on the top left quadrant on the rule of thirds grid here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is adjust the positioning in my effect controls panel on the X axis here. Now we'll move the Y axis down a little bit. And the next thing I'm gonna do is scale into the footage by bringing the scale to 120. We'll adjust the position a little bit more so that Will's eye sits nicely on that top left quadrant. Now, personally with footage I film, I don't like to scale into it too much because if you scale in too much, you start to notice quality loss in your footage. I won't scale in more than to 125. And if I'm scaling into my footage, I'll watch it on a bigger screen to make sure it's still looking good. And there you go, by scaling in your footage a little bit and adjusting the position accordingly, using the rule of thirds grid as a reference, that shot's now composed a lot better. I will admit, when it comes to filming on the go, especially when I'm doing YouTube videos, I, this is one of the things I usually overlook in the moment, and that is covering up logos. So in this next filming fail fix, that was hard to say, I'm gonna show you how to hide a logo, and this is something that has saved me more times than I'd like to admit. Let's get into Premiere Pro and take a look. Okay, let's say you filmed something like, in this case, you filmed someone's hands typing on a keyboard, and you didn't notice that logo in the background that you really shouldn't have on your footage, but you can't go back and refilm it. You gotta work with the footage you've got. So first things first, I'm gonna go down to my timeline, hold Alt or Option on my keyboard, 
click on the clip that's currently on the V1 track and drag it up. And I've created a duplicate of that clip. Now we'll select the clip that's on the V2 track and go up to the effect controls panel. And where it says opacity, let's select the pen tool. Bring it over to the program window and we're gonna draw a rectangle around this logo like so. Next, we're gonna check mark inverted and you can't see this yet, but what we've just done is created a cutout, a rectangle cutout of that clip. Cool, okay, now let's go back down to the timeline and select the clip that's on the V1 track by clicking on it. We'll go back up to effect controls. We wanna move the position of this first clip that's underneath the second clip around until we no longer see that logo, but instead we just see that black screen. And while in some cases it can work really well for you to use part of the clip to mask out another part of the clip, but we're having some trouble here. See, I really wanna use the black part of the screen from the clip on video track one, but the sizing of it's currently just not working for me. So another trick you can do is go back up to effect controls and uncheck uniform scale. Now this is gonna give you the option to scale just the height of the clip or just the width of the clip. We'll scale the width to 170. We'll leave the height at 100. We'll move our position around a little bit more. And check that out, we've dragged the width of the clip on the V1 track out so that we're still using the black sheer color of the screen, but we're no longer seeing that logo. In the effect controls window under opacity and the mask dropdown menu, where it says mask feather, we'll bring that to about 40, just so the edges of this clip feathers. So clip one and clip two blend nicely together. And I'll scrub through the timeline to play that back. Beautiful, there we go. We have masked that logo out, and now it doesn't look like it was ever there at all. Awesome. And there you go. Thank you so much for checking this video out. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a thumbs up because that lets us know that you liked it. And to see more videos like this one about filmmaking, editing, and uh, all the travel that we're doing, then subscribe to our channel. We're putting new videos out weekly. So with that, I'm off, have yourself a lovely rest of the day and we will see you next week. Thanks for checking this video out. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking because I gotta go.